And so we come to the final point, and it's, it's kind of be kind of a short one, but Dr. Shirley has all this tremendous talent, all right? I mean, you heard him play. He, he was amazing, but he is very isolated, and he's very alone. And how many of you know being isolated is not good? And he's estranged, actually, from what little family he has. And there's a scene where, where Tony says to him, you know, the world is full of lonely people afraid to make the first move. And Tony, on the other hand, in many ways is less advantaged than Dr. Donald Shirley, but he seems to be embraced in a world with his family and with his friends in a, in a relational and supportive environment, you know, where, where, where you know, it just seems like no matter what happens, he's got plenty of people to help him get through it. And uh, one of the things that happens as the movie comes to a close is after the last concert date, they are trying to get back so that Tony can be with his family and with his kids on Christmas. And, and uh, so they drive and they drive. They wind up in a blizzard. And, and uh, actually, you know, the guy who ends up driving the last leg of, the, of that long journey from the south back to New York is, is Dr. Shirley himself. And so they pull up in front of Tony's house and, and Tony gets out and he's he begs Dr. Shirley. He says, look, man, please come in. Please be with us during this season. Come on, come and join us. And he's urging him. But Dr. Shirley says, no, it's, it's, it's you know, this is your time. And I don't want to interrupt anything. And, and so Dr. Shirley, although he's incredibly accomplished and, and incredibly intelligent and wise individual, he goes back to his apartment full of expensive things. And it's beautiful, but it's also incredibly, incredibly empty. Let's watch the last scene of the movie. It shows us how light penetrates the darkness. Welcome home. How, to be a how do, can you be a light in a dark world? My last point is this, and I think it's the most powerful one. By taking the risk to welcome and embrace others. But taking the risk to welcome and embrace others. There's power in embracing others. As a person made in the image of God, and all of us here today are made in His image, there are certain longings and desires that you have that are God-given because you see everyone longs for the love and the comfort of what I call home. We all have an intimate desire, an innate desire for love. I don't care how tough you may think you are and present yourself. I don't care how rough of a life you may have had. There is within each one of us that desire for home and family and friends and love. And I just want to say this morning that that's the kingdom, isn't it? That's the kingdom of God. That's Jesus. And I'll be honest, I knew from the very beginning of the movie that that scene was coming. I knew it was coming. How many of you would know it was coming? But let me tell you, when I watched that movie and I saw that scene, I'm going to be honest, I, I, I had tears in my eyes because it moved, it moved me because it's just like God is saying to us, hey, this is what I had in mind all along. This is what my desire has been because, and that's why when Jesus came, you know, his, his heart was always to restore the feeling that there is of love and family. But you see, the truth is that we have to choose that. We have to choose to take the risk to walk, to be, to, you know, to, 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 to go. And I don't know how about you, how, how you feel, but... Let me tell you how I feel about being a part of the kingdom, about being a part of the family of God, of the church of Jesus Christ. It feels like that embrace to me. Amen? It feels like that is what God desires. And in fact, let me read this verse for you, John 1, 11 and 12. This is from John's version of the Christmas story. He said, He came to His own, and those who were His own did not receive Him. But this is the good part. But to as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. J Jesus says, look, to as many of you as will receive me, you're going to become a part of my family. You're going you're to feel the, the, the welcome of what that feels like. And, 
And, you know, part of, and everybody laughed, you know, when, when he introduced him, there was that awkward moment when it was like, and, you know, we, we, we forget what that feels like sometimes, I think. You know, and, that, and that's what the people out there in the world, they think, I'd like to be a part of the family, but, 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 when it, but if I come, or am I going to get that awkward moment when you're not sure if you're going to be loved or accepted? And how great it was when the guy goes, hey, what's the matter with you? Get the plate. Come on. And he was welcomed with a warm and loving embrace. And I'll have you know that that's the heart of God. To welcome whoever comes with a warm and loving embrace. That's the heart of this pastor. That whoever walks through the door is welcomed with a warm and loving embrace. Come on. That should be our heart. That should be our spirit. Come on. And that's what God desires of us today. But we've got to decide. And you have to decide I want to receive the light. I want to become a part of the family. You know, Dr. Shirley was up there looking around at all of this nice, elegant stuff. But how many of you know elegant stuff doesn't make you feel good when you're alone? And he pulls that little blue rock. That rock reminded him of Tony. And he puts it and he got to thinking about his friend Tony. And he took the risk. He didn't know whether he was going to be loved and accepted. But I'm going to tell you something. There's something that we can be sure of when somebody comes to Jesus. He said, he who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Come on. He who comes to me will be welcome. Amen. He proved that in the story of the prodigal son. When the prodigal who had wasted everything and went out and spent all of his father's money in riotous living and, and spent it in sinful ways, he comes back. And yet the father looks down the road. And what does the father do? He comes running down the road and he puts his arms around him and he gives him a kiss and he tells his servant, hey, put a ring on his finger, put a robe on his back, put some sandals on his feet because my son who was dead, he's now but been brought back to life come on amen we ought to celebrate we ought to celebrate the love of almighty god would you stand with me today amen amen